134. How Glooscap Found the Summer Long ago, the Wawaniki people lived in the northeastern part of North America. Their leader's name was Glooscap. One time, it grew very cold. Snow and ice were everywhere, and plants could not grow. The Wawaniki began to die from the cold and famine. Glooscap traveled far north, where the land was all ice. He came to a wigwam, where he found winter. Winter was a giant with icy breath. Winter's breath was so cold, it had frozen all the land. Glooscap entered Winter's wigwam and sat down. Winter told him stories of the old times, when he, Winter, ruled Earth, when all the land was white and beautiful. As Winter talked, Glooscap fell asleep. Winter put a charm on Glooscap, and he slept for six months. Finally, Glooscap woke up. A wild bird named Tatler the Loon came and told him about a country in the south that was always warm. The bird said that a queen lived there who could make winter go away. I must save my people, Glooscap thought. So he decided to go south and find the queen. Glooscap traveled south until he came to a warm forest with many flowers and trees. There he found Summer, the fairy queen. Glooscap knew that Summer could make winter go away. So he said to her, Come with me to the land in the far north. Summer agreed to go with Glooscap. When they reached Winter's wigwam, Winter welcomed them. I'll make them fall asleep, Winter thought. But this time, Glooscap's power was stronger because Summer was with him. First, Glooscap and Summer made sweat run down Winter's face. Winter started to cry because he was losing his power. Next, Winter's icy wigwam melted. Then, Summer used her power, and everything woke up. The grass and flowers grew, leaves appeared on trees, and the snow ran down the rivers. My power is gone, Winter cried. Then Summer said, I have proved that I am stronger than you, so now I will give you all the country to the far north. Six months of every year you may come back to Glooscap's country. During the other six months, I will come back to his land. I accept your offer, Winter whispered sadly. So every autumn, Winter returns to Glooscap's country and brings cold and snow. When he comes, Summer runs home to her land in the south. But at the end of six months, Summer always returns to drive winter away and bring back the grass, leaves, and flowers. Okay, so this is a myth explaining <clears throat> how the seasons were um, came to be. You also had something in your vocabulary recently about Persephone and Demeter. And I believe you're going to be reading that story in part two. So look at this illustration. I believe that this would be winter then in the middle. Here's winter sweating or crying. And the summer fairy, and this must be Glue Scout. Okay, so myths are fictional stories that attempt to explain something about nature. How Glooscap Found the Summer is a Native American myth of the Algonquin people. Persephone, aha, uh -huh, here it is, Persephone and the Pomegranate Seeds is an ancient Greek myth. Both myths explain why Earth has seasons. And literary element, a hero, or if it's a girl, heroine, a hero or heroine is a character in a story where actions are inspiring or noble. Okay, I'm sorry, character in a story whose actions are inspiring or noble. They're the hero. What they do is good. Heroes and heroines often struggle to overcome, to solve or overcome a problem. 
The word hero was originally used only for heroic male characters and heroine for heroic female characters. Today, however, the word hero can be used for a man or woman, male or female character. So who is the hero or heroine in this story? Okay. Would you say that Glooskap is the hero or would you say that Summer is the hero? And why? So looking at the vocabulary, famine is a time when there's not enough food. Wigwam, you see the word a couple of times. It's what the Native Americans called their type of home. And it was made by covering a frame with bark or animal skins. And they often looked kind of round like this. So they had a frame and then they put skins on top of it. Wigwam. Okay, giant. A giant is a very large, very strong person. And if you put a charm on, you're using your powers. You're being persuasive. Okay. You know what sweat is when you exercise or run the mile and liquid comes out of your skin? Melted. We know that word. When ice is changed to water by heat. Okay. So what problem do the Wamaniki people have. What is their problem? What is their problem? It says that they began to, right? What happens here? They began to die because of the cold and because they don't have food to eat. They couldn't grow food in the cold. So that's their problem. And who is going to solve the problem? Who's going to help them solve the problem? Glosskop, right? How does Summer help Glosskop? What does she do? Okay. In this story, Winter puts a charm on Glosskop. Do you know of another story like this? Think about that. Have you heard of other stories where someone puts a charm on? And what does that mean again? They use their powers. They use their powers. Okay. Page 236. Persephone and the Pomegranate Seeds. Long ago, Demeter, the goddess of agriculture, had a beautiful daughter named Persephone. Demeter helped trees and plants grow on earth. Pluto, the god of the underworld, lived under earth, where it was always dark and cold. Pluto wanted a wife, but no one wanted to leave the sunshine to live in Pluto's dark world underground. One day, Pluto saw Persephone while she was picking flowers. He wanted to marry her, but he knew that Demeter would say no. So he rode a chariot and took Persephone to the underworld. As they were crossing a river, Persephone dropped her flowers into the water. The river took the flowers to Demeter. Demeter asked Zeus, the king of the gods, to help her get Persephone back. Zeus answered, I'll send my messenger, Hermes, to the underworld. But if Persephone eats anything there, she cannot return to Earth. Pluto knew that if Persephone ate anything, she must stay with him. So he gave her twelve pomegranate seeds. She was very hungry and started to eat. While she was eating, Hermes arrived. Persephone, did you eat the twelve seeds? he inquired. I ate only six, she replied. Hermes didn't know what to do, so he returned to Zeus. Zeus said, Persephone ate six seeds, so she must stay in the underworld six months a year. She can spend the other six months on Earth with Demeter. And that is why there are six cold months of autumn and winter each year, and six warm months of spring and summer. 
Okay. <clears throat> so I wonder if you noticed that in the other version of this story that we had in vocabulary, it said Hades, not Pluto. Did you notice that? So the Greeks and the Romans shared the same gods, these ancient mythological gods that they share. And the Roman name for Hades was Pluto, and the Greek name for Hades is Hades. So sometimes the names are a little bit different, although they are talking about the same mythological god of ancient Rome and ancient Greece. Okay, so let's look at the literary element here. Conflict. Say conflict. Conflict is the struggle. It's the problem. The struggle between opposing or opposite forces. So you think of conflict. Okay. Two opposite forces opposing each other. And that is the conflict. Conflict is important in stories because conflict causes the action. Without conflict, stories would be very boring because nothing would happen. Conflict can be between characters or between groups of people. Conflict can also be between a character and a force of nature, or it can take place in the character's mind. So if the character's thinking about something and not sure what to do and there's a problem in your own mind, that's conflict. So what is the conflict in this story? It's between a character and... Another character, right? Okay. Um, conflict. I want to quickly tell you a little bit more about conflict. So the three types of conflict listed here are explained this way in literature classes. So you need to know it. We say man, man versus man. That's conflict between two people. Man versus nature. Man versus nature. This is, there's an earthquake, there's a hurricane, there's a natural disaster, and we have to survive. Or we say man versus himself. Okay, those are the three types of conflict that are explained here. So the, the type of conflict we have is man versus man, even though one of the man, two of the men are actually gods. Okay. Okay. 